Now we would like to hear our expert speaker's view on building a thriving ecosystem for BMT. Our first speaker is Hiba Siddiqui. Hiba Siddiqui is a senior psycho oncologist with Max Healthcare, Delhi NCR. She is currently pursuing PhD at Indian Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, with research focus on cancer survivorship in India. She is trained from the from the University of uh, University College Dublin in Ireland. and has completed her post graduation from the tata institute of social sciences in mumbai with a work experience of 10 years she extensively works in the field of health psychology and cancer care her therapeutic work also includes working with teenagers and adults on emotional social or health related concerns she is involved in research and training as well as support group planning and facilitation over to you hiba ma'am Hi everyone! Thank you so much um, for the invite. First of all, and Neeraj, I think before uh, I do begin, I want to apologize to the audience that uh, I think my uh, circumstances and my background would be very different than what I usually do. But uh, I'm actually on a holiday, meeting some people in Bangalore, and uh, but I think Neeraj reached out. Uh, I think two days before I was about to fly here, and I know how much uh, work and effort he puts in. into the bmt group which is one of the very few and uh, you know doing such amazing work and it would have been uh, my loss to not be a part of this so thank you so much um, team bmt for having me and um, also i do want to acknowledge um, the three uh, young interns and back end managers um, both starting from standard 10 to uh, junior college i think that's what they call bachelors i'm guessing uh so uh, great great show guys and uh, i think just to uh, probably give a very generic view of i think my involvement or the kind of uh, work that i also do in oncology uh, with a specific focus to bmt of course i think when we talk about cancer uh, i won't get into the theoretical aspect of it because you know all of you have heard many talks with it but i think the impact when we look at it psychologically behaviorally and socially that's where the involvement of community and group uh, comes in where we are looking at ourselves all of us as human beings are social beings so it's very uh, you know it's either a conscious choice that you isolate yourself or not but cancer is an experience one is long term and anything that adds chronicity to it's healing and recovery and journey one feels like it's the end so even before you start you end up feeling like you know this is the end for me so when mentally mood wise emotionally there's an impact you know sometimes you're having a lot of mood swings you're irritable you're also just asking a lot of questions as to why it's happened irrespective of your age your gender uh, who you are what background you come from and many times one ends up projecting that onto the people around you more often than not your very very close loved ones your family your friends partner siblings children and so on that in itself leads to a huge amount of grief and i look at grief with a very different eye i think when we look at grief we also look at someone died or passed on I look at grief of having lost the time that I could have probably done something else, but I have to go for my BMT or my chemotherapy or my radiation surgery for the people who have it, and I know not in BMT group. That involves a lot of grief. I could have been someone somewhere else. I could have been traveling. I could have gone for a movie when I got my report, and now I don't feel like it. You start associating a lot of spaces with that kind of grief, which a lot of times stay with you for many years. so when we're talking about the need to build a healthy community and the space what neerat was saying in the starting it's not about the fact that i can't handle myself anymore and that's why i have to reach out to someone a lot of times patients come to me their families and they're like i'm not as weak you know i'm not crying because i'm weak by the way and it's not them telling me i'm a nobody i'm an outsider it's also them reminding themselves that they're not weak that they still quote and quote strong to handle through this so what communities bring is one to normalize that experience for you 
it gives you support not because they're sympathizing with you but they actually empathize what you've gone through there is a certain sense of validation that one often seeks from their treating physician support staff you're constantly asking doctors is it normal is it normal to have the side effect you know hair loss weight loss my counts are low you understand that this is part of the process that reverses itself you share knowledge it's important to realize that even as people who are part of that community you need to be responsible with the kind of knowledge that you're sharing with your fellow peers even with other patients if you've recovered you've come out of the treatment you can also be responsible to say just because i went through something doesn't mean that you will too you can ask them to go to the right person you can guide them to the right people who might be able to help more objectively and professionally so even as people a lot of you here um who uh, city was sharing her experience and thank you uh, you know sort of getting all of us in that experience but to also realize that you may have gone through so many things that many other people even your own age may not go through so sometimes they carry that fear they're also scared there's a lot of stigma around this kind of treatment in general that also happens now that also brings me to what i do and a little bit about psycho oncology and the involvement or role in cancer care so where we come in we we are trained psychologists and then we sort of try to bridge the gap with the specialization between the physical aspects of the cancer and the mental aspects so it's essentially creating a bridge where you are catering to the psychosocial aspect of the illness cancer more often than not is just talked about as to what physical implications it will have side effects treatment protocol everything is very mechanized very robotic that's obviously the most important thing but i often joke with my doctors that you know our head is the headquarters for my body so i often tell them if my headquarters are not okay your body is not going to be okay so you need to also realize the role of psychology or psycho oncological interventions in it now apart from awareness psycho education uh, again normalizing the experience and tailor making our uh, intervention techniques per person and their families who are very important by the way caregivers cannot be isolated from this therapeutic process you're also looking at rebuilding and re recognizing sorry your own potential and resilience which goes beyond the whole concept of i'm strong or i'm weak i hate using these two words even in my therapy sessions to be very honest because i i would often use it for myself and i realize how unhealthy it is to just categorize yourself when you actually have potential and resilience you just don't know uh, how much of it exists uh, and i think just moving beyond cancer we all survived the pandemic we didn't know that we're going to be fighting a global pandemic this is resilience uh, most people were isolated alone dealing with a lot of mental health challenges but here we are together right so what therapeutic spaces do is they bring in that self awareness of you realizing what your needs and wants are whether my need is to be comforted whether my need is to be validated and told i'll survive because a lot of times as patients or our families of patients uh, i've been a caregiver and i can talk from that perspective but i know a lot of times we go to people and we say oh we get what chemotherapy feels like let me be very honest we don't get it so it's also a very individual experience that you're going through and it's important to build that empathy right it's important to also be able to go out there meet your friends while you're on treatment and normalize it without being the center of the focus and everyone asking how are you what's your treatment like you can stop that you can build those boundaries and say you know what i'm beyond cancer and i have a personality i'm also your friend i have a relationship that i share whether you're 18 years old or you're 50 years old or you're 70 years old cancer doesn't define you and i think just to sort of like summate uh, what i often sort of share and that works for me uh, my things that work for my friends and family i feel like laughing really helps and i feel that so many things can be just eased out when you acknowledge humor both in your life and others lives and that's what we do as a team we deal with a lot of heavy loadedness right in oncology uh, but we have these moments where 10 minutes 15 minutes we like no shop talk 
so we're just going to either you know uh, talk about netflix we talk about life we talk about friends and family i'm in bangalore right now and um, they're probably like oh heba will come back on monday and have a verbal diary of her experience everyone knows my friends so i that's my way of keeping them in my life and without you choose how you want to look if you feel physically uncomfortable i know it's easier said than done uh, and i don't want to sound patronizing to say no you know you look fine and you go out there it's also our own independent definitions of what beauty and what you know how my body is seen to me if i'm feeling weak i know it's difficult for me to recognize with it and it can also add to a lot of existing trauma that cancer in itself brings so i think just to close it's important to realize what and who your support circle is how you want to be in it and reach out to professionals they're all around you you just have to pick up a call you can reach out to specialists who are psycho oncologists trained in psycho oncology you can also reach out to psychologists clinical counseling uh, who are trained and who are working with trauma with health and medical psychology as well so i guess this is it for me if you have any quick, uh, small window so i don't want to drag and i don't want to extend my time so thank you so much and thank you neeraj once again for having me here